Hello everybody, we're here doing Seo Chin Self-Defense Bunkai for Mission Your Karate. Um, what you just saw was Christopher doing the first three pieces that lead up to the end of that first section. So it's easy just to show what each section or each of those sections means once. So um, I like to think of it from a lot of different um, perspectives. Um, from the front attack, if Christopher were to come at me from the front uh, and he grabs me for instance, I would maybe sink my weight so that I'm more immovable and I would block him and then I could block him this way. Uh, it's not my favorite version just because I'm open at the lower extremity and I wouldn't want to be open to attack. A better version for me would be if he grabbed me from behind in some way and the horse stance would represent that I would want to get stable so that he couldn't move me around. So the moment I feel the attack coming, so let's say he, I, I don't know what's coming and I feel somebody buck, bump into me, I sink down and get a stable position, which to me is a lot about what Seo Chin represents. Then I, I get my hands up in there and I, and I struggle a little bit. Hence in the kata, these motions are very isometric, they're very slow and methodical um, to represent that they're struggle. So when he grabs me, I like to come up and use this as a prying element and then as a, as a clearing and also a, a subsequent grabbing um, motion. So then at that point, um, the next move is this clearing motion in this block. So if he comes at me from the side with an attack or whatever motion, I would block it and, and trap it. We covered that in Seisan's bunk guy video. But in this position or this scenario, as he grabs me from the bear hug, I come up, I block, and I grab, and I like to use that motion as that motion I just showed you. That's a very favorite motion of mine when I'm doing self-defense. The next piece of Seo Chin, Sensei Chris is going to come at me from a karate standpoint with a kick. This isn't my favorite version because most people who know how to kick are very strong and, and you're going to get injured. So when he comes at me with a kick, the piece that, that looks like this to me is coming down and hitting him in the foot. I, I believe most issue people would say that's the move. Um, I'm willing to do that. Not something I would recommend to a lot of people, at least in the intro, you know, the very um, infancy of their martial arts training. Um, another piece, when the hand is here and we hit our hand, he comes in, if you're lucky enough to sidestep and hook it, it could be um, the back fist to the strike there. If you, if you kind of then go outside of the box a little bit, let's say I am lucky enough to evade and, and catch the kick to some degree. Here, I like to use that back fist as, as more of a, a leg bar or a or hyper extension of the knee, whereas I hit him, I also press down and take him down that way. Uh, for me, that's a little bit more useful than trying to hit the foot out of the midair as it's kicking at you. So let me show you those two again quickly. So Christopher Sensei Chris comes in, I step on the way, I hit him. Number two, he comes in, maybe I'm lucky enough to catch it, and I, and I hit him, which maybe is a little bit more what I would do. Thirdly, and the most I would do, he comes in, I step out of the way, I hit him, but go right into the motion of, of taking him down. I like that a lot. The piece right after that then is a, is a secondary punch. So let's say he kicks me, I hit him, and, and, he, and he comes down in pain, I then punch him. Very useful. He comes in, I catch his foot, I hit him, and then I punch him. Again, pretty useful. Uh, the last move would be the, the elbow up high. So going through the, the same scenario, he comes in, I knock his foot down, I punch him, I grab his head, and I come up and I elbow him. That's what that piece would represent. Now, if you go to more of a jujitsu, or in this case, an Aikido element, I like this this next thing particularly a lot. So, Sensei Chris grabs my wrist or, or something. He grabs me, but somehow I get a hold of him. So I'll show you the technique and then I'll show you how I see it in the kata. I grab his hand so he can't let go. 
I come around somewhat like the circular block we see in Seisan and Seo Chin. I grab him, I circle, I grab, and it puts him in this motion that creates this S, which in Aikido is called Nikkyo, the second move in Aikido. So again, he grabs, I grab, I come around, it creates the beginning of the S, I grab on, and I make him come forward or down. From that point, he, he's down lower, this is perfect. I now come in and I punch him, and then I grab and I finish with the elbow. So as you can see, one, two, three. One, two, three, and then the elbow. I like that the most out of that translation. We get to the middle of the kata of Seo Chin that has a lot of nice pieces to it. It reminds me uh, that I didn't mention earlier that Seo Chin has a lot of motions that has double action blocking or motion to it. So we see this in the beginning, we see this in the beginning. Uh, now we get to the point where we see reinforcement of, of blocks, which is much more useful than just one-sided, but, but seeing this motion. So we just did the piece where Sensei Chris grabbed me or he kicked me, and I went one, two, and three. Theoretically, that, that situation's been dealt with, but we go to the next piece, which is a new situation or a continuation in case the person could handle our, our self-defense. So. Um, the Ishinu karate answer would be he goes to hit me, maybe a little bit more rounded, and I come in and I use two hands to block. I often tell my students it's best to move and get out of the way. Sometimes you don't have a choice. Maybe he grabs me, um, most likely with the other hand in this next situation, and I have to block. Or maybe I'm on the ground and I can't move and I have to block because he's coming down with punches. Anyway, he grabs me, he goes to punch, and I block. The next motion typically would be to step in and low block, but as you can see in this situation, there's nothing there. So I like to use the low block as a takedown technique um, after I block the punch. So Sensei grabs me, I block it, I grab it, and as I step through, I use the low block motion to, to take him down and back, which I love a lot. I think for me, that's a lot more than useful then to, to use that as a blocking. Then we have the other side, same idea. So we want one, two, and three, and then we just do the other side to create an ambidextrous um, ability. So in a similar way, let's say Christopher Sensei Chris comes at me with his left-handed punch, but it's a little straighter, but I decide to use the two hands together for, for fortification. So he comes in and I block it, I like to use that low block motion also as an arm bar if it, if it permits. So I grab his hand, I step in, and now I've got him in an arm bar. So taking him out of the picture, I block and I low block, but again, he comes at me, I block and I come in and the motion, if, if you photoshopped him out, it would still look the same from my perspective. I like that a lot as, a, as an arm bar as well. So that concludes part one of the Seo Chin Bunkai. There are other elements that I'd like to include and we will do that in the upcoming months. But I did want to just get the basics out there so that people could start thinking about it um, and practicing at home. Another piece I, I neglected to mention earlier is that Seo Chin also has a lot of motion in it and, and how to move with footwork. So as the rest of the part two video um, goes, I will deal with that as well.